Aleluia. Aleluia. Father, we want to thank you very much for what you have done already. Because you have done so many things here. We can testify. We can see. We can see with the eye of the Spirit that many things have been wrought in the lives of your people already. Lord, we are asking, let it be permanent. Tonight, as we hear your word, give us personal revival. Let it begin from our soul. Holy Ghost revival. Revival of the word. Spirit of the living God. Glorify Jesus tonight. Thank you, Abba Father. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. And the church say? Amen. You may be seated. God bless you. Tonight, I want to share with us. Uh, please, Pastor, when it's uh, 10 minutes to... Okay. Okay, they will put it, thank you. I would like to, you know, <laughs> because when we, you just take off like that, you don't even look at the watch. Sorry. Okay, I want to share on the sacrifice of following Jesus. To give your life to Christ is free of charge. Some people could have prayed. Some people would have preached before somebody now preached and you now uh, answer the altar call. Pretty good. But, somebody say but. To follow Jesus, you will pay price. I thought somebody would say amen. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. I want to appreciate the leadership of this church. Let me not jump protocol. I want to thank God for our father that has invited us to come and share with us. And our mommy too, who have been holding forth for him. God bless you. Thank you so much for Pastor. I'm sorry. Pastor Kalejaye, yes. Thank you so much. God bless you and the team. Amen. So I said, to follow Jesus, there's price attached to it. How many of you know that anything that is good has price? Anything that is valuable has price. Nobody is talking again. <laughs> of any bala, it's okay. After you bala, go. You have to pay the price. But God is already ahead of us. Because the grace came by Christ. And that is why you can flow by the grace of God. That is why I can flow by the grace of God. Because God will never ask you to do any work that he cannot do. Say amen. That is one. God will never send you on a work that he will not back you up. So, we are his workmanship. And God will continue to keep us for his glory in Jesus' name. Amen. However, what God laid on my heart this morning is the ministry of the word. The ministry of the word. Uh, we also, we always say, prayer is the key, prayer is the key. Prayer is the master. Jesus started with prayer and ended. Jesus 
Prayer is the master key. Thank you. But do you ever think of this fact that Jesus is the word of God? And so, without the word, you cannot pray effectively. The reason we are saying Jesus, I mean, prayer is the key. Prayer is what? The key. Is because we take for granted that Jesus Christ is the word. And it is the word of God that is creative. It is the word of God that carries the power, the energy, the ruach of God. In the New Testament, the word and the spirit, they work together. Without the word, the spirit will not work. So you see some people say, oh, pastor, it's happening here. Pastor, somebody is falling. Pastor, pastor. Somebody say pastor. 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 Without the word, check out. Check it out. Jesus sent them to go and do what? Oh, I thought it's to go and perform miracle. No, preach what the word. So today or tonight, I want us to look at the Lord Himself coming as saint by the Father. And I trust God as, as from tonight, the word of God will have more meaning to you than ever before. You will cherish the word of God. Do you know that in Asia, just a page of the Bible, because it's a communist country, is what a community may be sharing, passing around, just a, a, a sheet. So you have just two pages. And they will literally put it in their head and in their heart that they will be living by that word. I see if is somebody they are living with. You understand what I'm saying? Let me tell you another one. A group of missionaries in Asia, because you cannot go and raise money to go and preach the gospel. Do you know what they did? They went to give their blood and collect money to go and preach. To save some souls. We are so privileged here in this part of the world that we have Bible, different translation and all that. He said, man of God, what are you saying? I'm just preparing your heart so that you can value the word of God more than ever before because that is the jugular of God. Psalm 138 verse 2. He has exalted his word above, above, above every of his name. What does that mean to us? God cannot do a thing without his word. Why? Because he cherishes his word. Why? Who shall speak and it will come to pass except the Lord has spoken? When God speaks, that word is like fire. It penetrates. Nothing can stand before it. Can I hear your amen? Okay, because of time, let's go and read the Bible now. In Mark chapter 3, I want to read from verse 31 to 35. Mark chapter 3. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Then his brothers and his mother came and standing outside, they sent to him, calling him. 
And a multitude was sitting around him. And they said to him, Look, your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. But he answered them, saying, Who is my mother? Or my brothers? He looked around in a circle at those who sat around him, about him, and said, Here are my mother and my brothers, for whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and my mother. Let's go quickly to Luke chapter 8. And I'm reading verse 19 to 21. Amplified version. Then Jesus, mother and his brothers, came up towards him. Do you know this is another scenario? <laughs> they came up towards him, but they couldn't reach him because of the crowd. And he was told, your mother and your brothers are standing outside asking to see you. But he answered, my mother and my brothers are these who listen to the word of God and do it. May the Lord bless his word in our heart in Jesus' name. That is the power. That is the importance. That is the efficacy. That is the efficiency. That is what heaven recognized as the voice of God, the word of God. Somebody say the word of God. What is Jesus doing here? To the extent that the, you honor the word of God is to the extent you honor God. To the extent <laughs> you know, you relate, you align your life under the authority of the world, to that extent you know God. God is a spirit. Am I communicating? But he speaks. And when he speaks, the Bible describes his voice as thunder. The Bible describes his voice as like many water rushing in the book of Psalms. That is to let us know the importance of the word of God. <laughs> Do you know that if we are to pray this night, the way I'm feeling my spirit is that we pray to honor God's word. Because when we honor God's word, many things that we pray so much for would have been taken care of. Why? Because God say, I will honor those who honor me. He's talking about this word. And I will despise those who dishonor me. I remember in the case of Eli. When Samuel, he asked Samuel, what did he tell you? And Samuel did. He said, tell me, son. Tell me. And when he told him, what did he say? Is it not God? Let him do whatever he wants. There's a time you get so familiar with the word of God 
you begin to lightly esteem God. Everything starts from the world. Did you see the caliber of people that came to Jesus? The father, I mean the mother, the brothers. They stay outside. It's like calling for, it's our son now, it's our brother. Call him for us. And they say, ah, your mother, your brother. What did he say? He said, so I will leave the word of God. Who is my brother? Who is my mother? Except you that are doing the will of God. Another time, who is my brother? Who is my mother? Except people who are hearing the word of God and are doing it. Somebody can say amen there. See, Jesus at age 12 had already studied the Torah and it has become part of his life to the extent that he was in the temple. He was reasoning with the Pharisees, the authorities, the scribe in the land of the word of God. Thank you, sir. And by the time they went back and they realized that it was not with them and they came back after some days, they find him where? At what age? Twelve. They say, son, what is it? Don't you know that I must go about my father's business? Somebody asks the person beside you, what is your father's business? The word of God. The word of God. God does not want to know anything about you except by the knowledge of his word. <laughs> Jesus said, why seek me? Don't you know I must be about my father's business? Luke chapter 2. Read verse Around verse 47 to 45 to 50. Okay, you can just speak from 41 to 52. Then said I, that is Jesus, when the Father sent him. Then said I, Behold, I have come. In the volume of book, at his, as it is written of me, to do your will, O oh God. Hebrews 10, 7. What does that mean? Everything about your life is written in this book. But you have to search it out. The Bible says the secret things belong to God. But the kings, they search it out. Everything written about you, ever before you were born, you locate this. In this book, as you create more time, as you honor the word of God, as you take the word of God in literally, like Jeremiah swallowed the scroll. Am I communicating? The Lord will give us understanding in Jesus' name. John chapter 5 verse 19. John chapter 5 verse 30. Jesus said, Most 
assuredly I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the father do. For whatever he does, the son also does in like manner. Amen? Verse 30. I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is righteous. Because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. Are you seeing price to be paid in that? There are so many things locked up, if not for time. If we begin to look at the nitty gritty, you don't take the word of God for granted. That is what he's saying. When you study, somebody says study. When you read, somebody read. Somebody say when you memorize. When you hear the word of God, when you meditate on the word of God, it becomes part of you. It transforms your life. There are two things that we easily mix, mix up. Let me tell you. When you approach God and his word, Approach him as one who wants to do his will. Am I communicating? Thy will be done, O God, on earth as it is done in. You don't have any business to pray if you don't want to do his will. You know what you are saying? Just do my will. Just stamp it. Whatever I bring to you, stamp it. God is not a robot. Hello? Time will not permit me. If you force God to give you what he does not want to give you, he can destroy you. May that not be a portion in Jesus' name. Say with me, Heavenly Father, what is not written concerning me? Let it not come my way. In the name of Jesus. I do I help all. It's a great prayer. God said, I gave them king in my anger. And I took him in my rod. It's talking about some. When the children of Israel said, Samuel, whoa, 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 whoa. Then he said, give us king like other nations. He said, eh, how does God see it? They don't want me to rule over them. Give them some. May that not be a portion. In Jesus' name. Let's continue. You are getting something. Thank you. I'm getting it too. Do you know that in the book of Psalms, Chapter 119, verse 1 to 176 is talking about the word of God. The importance of the word, the efficacy of the word, how you must honor the word. Your word have I hid in my heart that I will not sin against you. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. What can we do without the word? I don't know. It does not exist. As people of God do, people of the world, they can use their, their intelligence, intellectualism. <laughs> but when you want to follow God, you follow him by his word. As a matter of fact, there is no amount of time you spend on the word that is too much. You know why? When God encapsulates you in his word, you will come out I might communicate. When you speak, 
you spit fire. My word is as fire, as hammer. Look at that. At the same time, it's like honey. At the same time, out of your belly shall flow. The more you spend time with the word of God, the more. It's not talking of your stomach. It's food that is inside. It's a, it's, it's a graphic word. It's an idiomatic expression that is out of your inner being. The word of God will flow. You know, when, the more you study the word of God, the more the Holy Spirit just begins to pop out the word according to what he needs to use it for. Am I communicating? When the devil came calling in Matthew chapter 4 and said to Jesus, after fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, and he knew he was hungry because he has finished fasting. He said, if you are the son of God, tell this stone to turn to bread. What did Jesus say? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Where did he find it? It's in Deuteronomy. Well, that scripture, the three scriptures he quoted, they are in Deuteronomy. So, if he asked the devil, wait, 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 let me go and pick my Torah. I'm coming. I will answer you. <laughs> what will happen? That is why we must do what? Spend time. Let me continue. Because there are three things we want to deal with. With a quick succession. When <clears throat> matter and Mary received who? Jesus in their house, in the house of Lazarus. What was Martha doing? Going to cook, going to prepare food. Am I communicating? What was Mary doing? How many Marys are in this house? She sat at the feet of the word. I hope that you know that Jesus is the word of God. In Revelation chapter 19, verse 13, the Bible says, Jesus is the word of God. She sat there, and Martha had the effort to come to Jesus and say, ah, Are you not a cultured man? A bondano? A bro, why joke with the Why? He didn't know that this word of God is the almighty God. And Jesus answered, Yes, who can be no only matter, matter. <laughs> you are encumbered with so many things. But Mary has chosen only one thing. And that one thing that is one thing about the word of God. When God reveals his word to you, it changes your life. It changes your thought. It changes your mindset. It changes the way you behave. It changes your attitude. It cha okay, let's continue. Number two. Number two. Relationship with God starts with the word of God. Did I hear you say amen? amen? You cannot have anything to do with God without his word. I've said that before. So, hearing his word. Two, understanding his word. May God give us understanding of his word. Three, walking in the light of God's word. By faith, that is how your faith grows. 
That is how you develop faith. Amen? Next one. That is how you develop obedience or ability to do the word of God because the unregenerated natural man is lawless. Am I communicating? It's only after his own. It's not after anybody. Just him, her, I, mine. But when you allow the word of God to rule over your life, you begin to release yourself like Jesus to the Father. And allow the word and the Holy Spirit to direct your path. That is when humility comes. Obedience to the word of God marks us out as disciples of Jesus. Amen? Jesus said, so, why do you keep calling me Lord, Lord, when you don't do what I say? Luke 6, verse 46. New Living Translation. Jesus command to his disciples, if you know these things, you are blessed, happy, and favored by God if you put them into practice and faithfully do them. John 13, 17. Amplified. What are we saying here? It's not just to know or cram, memorize the word of God from Genesis to Revelation. Thank God for you. It may be in your mind, it may be in your soul. Until it comes to your heart. Until you meditate on it. Until the Holy Spirit opens your eyes of understanding and enlighten it to the truth of the word by meditation. It is that time you have the capacity to rise up and walk in the light of the world. Let me give you an example. Two disciples on the way to Emmaus. <laughs> Can you hear what they say is happening? That uh, somebody who died, he don't, he don't rise. Do you hear where somebody died, rise again? Yeah, 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 yeah. And Jesus joined them. Say, folks, what are you talking about? Say, ah, this is what we are talking about. He said, you are a fool. You fools. Because there is disciple. How many times have I told you this? Will I go and die and come and rest so that you can believe? After rebuking them, he started from the law and the prophet to expand the scriptures. And at the point of that, I can't go for holy communion. At the point they got there, after about 11 and a half miles, they took the Holy Communion, their eyes opened. Ah, this is the door that rose. They ran back to Jerusalem. When the fire of the word is in you, strength comes. Strength comes. Nothing can stop you. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart of your mouth. You shall meditate in it day and night. You shall live by it. And by that you will have your way prosperous and you will have good success. There are bad success, there are good success. There is 149, there is 419, there is 412, 415. But when you stand on the word of God. Let me tell you, heaven will back you up. The blessing of the Lord that make rich and added no sorrow. The Lord will help us. Let's continue. Jesus has said the leadership of the Holy Spirit I mean of the Father. And he sent the Holy Spirit when he was going. And he told us, this Holy Spirit, the Comforter, this Holy Spirit, 
the guide. This Holy Spirit, the Ruach. This, oh my Kalebo Sikapayandi. This Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. He will teach you. He will remind you what I have taught you. He will receive of me and he will reveal to you. Sincerely, if we can just have time with the word and with the Lord, many things will happen in our lives. Jesus is our example. Am I communicating? So, I want to round up with this. Self-discipline is the totality of tarrying in the world. Am I communicating? You develop self-discipline. You will want to avoid what God hates. You will want to please God. You want, it's like, Lord, what more can I do to please you? That is when we give God time. Jesus said to the disciples, even the crowd, if you want to follow me, carry your cross. But first and foremost, deny yourself. What does that mean? Die to self. Then carry your cross. How do you carry cross? You carry like this. Submission. Surrender. Not my will. Your will be done. You die to flesh. You die to me. I, my, you allow God to lead you. And that is why the Bible says in Philippians 5, I mean 2, 5, let this mind be in you, which was first in Christ. It was God. He did not cause you to be God. Instead, what did he do? Humble himself. Humility is a point where we say, Lord, have your way. Have your way. Jesus loves everyone. Am I communicating? But he wants to have intimacy with his disciples. Those who are willing to go extra mile for him. I hope we know in rounding up that there's a difference between many that are called and few that are chosen. Is there no difference? There's a difference between wide gate, wide road. That so many fly. And narrow gate and narrow road. There's a difference. Somebody said there's a difference between pleasing self and pleasing God. By the authority in the name of Jesus Christ, our life will please God. What he wants is what we desire. What he hates is what we we'll turn away from. You know a man by what he runs to, God. You know a man by what he runs from, Satan. Rise up to your feet. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 7, what does the Bible say? Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow considering the end of their conversation. Give me verse 17. What does he say? 17. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit them, uh, yourself 
For they watch for your souls as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief. For that is unprofitable for you. When you want to see discipline, <laughs> it's very, very uncommon in the church today. When you want to see in discipline, we used to see it in the world, but today come to the church, you will see in discipline. We are going to pray. Lord, let your word have rulership over my life. Begin to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> your word, 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 let it take over. My senses, my reasoning. My intellectual capacity. Let your word take over. <laughs> when you give your life to Christ, you, it doesn't make you a dunce. As a matter of fact, you will be so much rich in the world. The Bible says, they listen to Peter, James, and John. These fishermen, they say, these people, where have they learned this? These are unlettered people. But they took cognizance of the fact that they have been with who? Jesus! May your life may your life begin to answer to the life of the disciples. Disciples of Christ. That people see and they know that these ones are smelling the aroma of Christ. They have word of authority, word of power. Yet, they never went to school. <laughs> Why? Because they have been with the fountain of life. They, they drink from the flow, <laughs> from the fountain flow that will never dry. Like Jesus told the woman at the well, can you imagine the almighty God sitting down at a well waiting for a woman whose life has been battered and messed up and that woman came out of that well experience and became the first evangelist come and see oh come and see <laughs> come and see oh come and see come and see what the that is how your life will change tonight Holy Spirit divine, have your way. Take preeminence. Everything that is me, my, myself, take it away from our reasoning. Let the Holy Spirit take over. Let the word of God lead us. Let the word be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. The Bible says the path of the righteous, they are as shining light that shines brighter, brighter, and brighter by the day. The more you spend time in the word of God, the more your intellect, the more your spirit, man, the more your soul is empowered with the word of Christ and with the spirit of Christ. And the more the fullness of the spirit, the authority of the word, the power of God will begin to flow out of your mouth shall flow, shall flow, shall flow wisdom, power, knowledge, understanding in the name of Jesus. You will get to your boardroom, you will speak, they say, let us listen to this man. You know why? He carries the touch of God. The word of God is... They get to a place, a whole king, a whole king wanted to go to battle. Jehoshaphat listened to all his 450 prophets. 
say, don't we have somebody here that hear God? Why? Joseph had knew when he hears strange voice. Don't we know or have somebody that will tell us the mind of God? And that's the whole Ahab said. I know one person, Micaiah is his name, but he will not say what I want to hear. I hate him. I don't like him. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You cannot contest against the word of God. Ahab did it. And Micaiah told him, if you go and come back, just know that the Lord has not spoken to me. What did he say? He said, come on, put him in prison. When I return, you will, you will see me face to face. He said, all of you, mark my word. He didn't say, don't say the Lord. He said, mark my word. If he comes back, then you know that God has not spoken to me. We are going to pray. Lord, me, make me your mouthpiece. <laughs> make me your voice for my generation. We have heard so many echoes. We need to hear from the throne of grace. Our Father is speaking. Who wants to hear? Who wants to position himself? Habakkuk said, of all these things that is happening in Israel and everybody is saying, I'm that right now, I will be on my watch. <laughs> and I will hear what the Father will say to me. Did the Father speak? Yes, he did. He said, I will do a thing. <laughs> Everyone that hears it will marvel. I pray for somebody today. May you position yourself to hear God. There's somebody here. God has been wanting to take you into the, the innermost, into the closest. He has been wanting to just have time with you. He has been wanting to sit with you. Tonight, you want to say, Father, not my will, but that your will be done. You cannot imagine what God will do with somebody who release himself to him. God is not looking for all this uh, LLM, D, 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 He is looking for somebody who is available. Say tonight, Lord, I am available. If you have any need to use anyone, use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Thank God for PhD. Thank God for professors. Thank God for everything later. But let me tell you, you need God and his word. Jesus Christ said, without me, you can do nothing. Lord, invade my heart, invade my spirit, invade, oh God, everything me. Turn it, oh God, oh, to a vessel you want to use, to a vessel you want to use, to a vessel you want to use, to a vessel you want to use. To want to use. Oh, turn it, oh God, to a vessel you want to use. And the boshika payande ke busole, le brosso to yende le kamasole. Oh Holy Ghost, have your way, have your way. Revival, revival, revival. Send down revival, Lord. Let it begin in my soul. Holy Ghost, revival. The Pentecostal. Send down, Lord. Let it begin in my soul. Holy Ghost Revival. The Pentecostal fire. Send down revival, Lord. Let it begin in my life. Holy Ghost Revival. The Pentecostal fire. Lord, minister to the sick here tonight. Let your hand of healing touch the sick. 
you will still have the balm in Gilead. Lord, let your hand touch everyone that is sick in their body. You spoke to me that you heal souls tonight. Lord, every mind that is troubled, every mind that is upset, let there be a touch of the Holy Spirit, a touch of healing, a touch of em emotional healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Give him praise tonight. Give him praise tonight. Give him adoration. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name.